again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons-Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick, and clearly I escaped from the insane asylum. And we have a very <laughs> unusual <laughs> one. Um, I also missed my haircut, so my hair is like a little ludicrous, <sighs> but uh, it should be back to yeah. whatever. Like, no, just this much, it. you know, it but does. it makes a difference. Mine, mine is just the, mine when it gets just that little bit, it's like it's, say you have a four-week or a six-week thing, right? Yep. Just too long? Just before it, it goes really bad, it's usually really good. And, yeah, but yeah. it like, all of a sudden, one day you wake up and you're like, what is this on my head? Yeah, it was just, it was a lot when yeah. it was blow drying it this morning. Yeah. I was like, huh. Oh. But anyway, it'll be, we'll fix it. Yeah. It's good. Whatever. Um, okay, well, it is what it is. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Mench Talk. Oh, so what about the freaking air quality out there? So I've had a cold for like a week, so my voice is now scruffy. Mm -hmm. um, now Dan's sleeping on the couch, so like uh, he's gonna have it for a few days, which is fine because it's rainy and gross and like whatever. Um, don't breathe. <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure I'm past. If this I was three days ago, I probably wouldn't have come. You oh know. wow. Um, but I, I it's funny because he just gets everything a few days behind me. That's just the way it is. Um, <laughs> you are a vector. <laughs> no, 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 I pick up all the stuff apparently. Um, but I, I, touch wood. I mean, I just flew and I usually get a little yep. thing after Why, that. Well, I figure. On top of whatever, you know, bug I caught, the, um, you know, pollen is up. There's all the, you know, the truck is yellow today. Um, so there's that. And then the wildfires in Canada are uh, totally affecting our air quality. So... It's so weird how that, like, originally there were some fires over in um, New Brunswick, because I have a friend that lives in New Brunswick, right. and she had posted something, so maybe, this was a couple weeks ago, I was like, oh no, that's terrible. But then I realized now they're more in, like, the middle so Quebec. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm becoming such a deep skeptic about everything. But I was like, I don't want to call any historical records of sort of these, like the, the, the fire in one place influencing well, the Well, because climate, I think we're so watching it now online. I really think that's why we think some things are different than what we did 30, you know, in our lifetime, because... You're like, holy cow, look at that. The smoke is over here. And they can show you on the, you know, the satellite that it's just circling around. Where years ago, it was like nobody thought, like, wow, the clouds, well, well, it's I, hazy. Wouldn't you be like, why is the sky white? I saw all these people posting today, and they were like, oh, I guess white skies are what we're going to have. I mean, and, it was weird. I, I it's mean, the it's just, smoke, And then right? it got me thinking I last know. night. I lived, at, I lived in Los Angeles for about a year, and... um. I was like, smog, what is smog? And I'm like, it wasn't a word. So did they take fog and smoke, smoke. right? And yep. I'm like, okay, but why does LA have such a smog problem? You know, like, there, there was is a, it because they're I in I think a there was a reason. There's because a microclimate like, Wait a minute. issue. It's also because uh, I think it has one of the highest per capita cars to people but ratio. But still, it's like you would stuff. expect New York City to have an equal problem mm. or something. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm pretty Why sure Los Angeles? So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's it is not crazy. a big deal. But I'll tell you what I'm skeptical about, too. What? The Lori's list. Yeah, there's been a lot of things in the news about the Lori's list, and um, so the, and and there the news is always as if with everything very vague, and only a bit of a story. Like so, you only get a, like a little taste. So if you don't know what the whole story is, you're just getting a tease. So so actually, for folks back home who may not know, the Lori's list, its formal name is the Exculpatory Evidence Schedule. This is a list that was generated by the AG's office of New Hampshire. And it is, uh, it's their duty to inform defense attorneys if they have, uh, if there is a state employee, a police officer specifically, that has uh, such credibility issues that they can't actually testify in court. So the short version is, it's like liars, liars, pants on fire, so bad that even the state says, Oof, you got to be careful with Which, these I mean, guys, right? I, and you assume, I mean, without even knowing, because I know more about it than, you know, like maybe a lot, you know more about it. Um, people, I presume that in order to, for my chief of my police department to stick me on a list that's going to make it hard to prosecute things, it's going to be because you're afraid that this is going to cost a prosecution. Like, you mishandled um, evidence, or you assaulted 
somebody you arrested yeah, it's, it's or excessive force falsified right. records you I made mean, up evidence things like that i mean oh, invariably i have yet to meet anyone anyone in the 30 plus years i've been involved in the legal world who who was like wow they only spoke the truth in my police report right so i mean in my case i was right like, it was I amazing was, the amount of I was so honest. shocked that I actually thought it was a gag. Right. Like, I thought someone had this sent me, my lawyers had sent me a fake police report. I was like, none of this happened. Right. Ha, 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 ha. Wouldn't that, that be like, funny? Uh, if I like, jumped wait, out what? of my car in the middle of the road on the 114 at 11 o'clock at night and run down the street screaming at the cops, remember yeah. the cause. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I was like, you guys should really start writing scripts. But anyway. So, so those people aren't even on the Lori's list, okay? So, so um, historically, there were hundreds of names yes. on the list. And then the AG started looking at it, and they were like, oh, we should probably clean this up. So we, we right to know New Hampshire, the ACLU, a lot of uh, sort of nonpartisan, bipartisan mm -hmm. organizations worked together. They passed a bill that I personally wasn't like a super fan of mm -hmm. a couple of years ago which actually allowed a process for police officers who are currently on the list to, uh, to file a case that is sealed, so a secret case at the Supreme Court to let lying cops get away with it. That's the uncharitable version. But all of those words yeah. strung together are also the facts of the matter. So. Um, so for the past two years, we haven't really heard anything. Like, uh, you know, I, I mean, people who watch the show, we would always talk about it. Yeah. We'd be like, oh, these people, oh, they've released more names. So these last names are sort of in this pool where they didn't release the names and they're like, you eh, know, we're not sure about these ones. Let's see if we can get some of these folks off. And if you're wrongly on there, I get it. I I'm skeptical. Maybe maybe the wrong people are on the list and the right people are the people putting them on I the list. Know. I mean, it's hard to know, but this is the control system we currently have. So in today's paper, what came out was that three of these cases, again, secret, under seal, hmm, uh, so we don't know who the officers nope. are, but the facts that came out were, hey, these guys are only on the list because they... They fudged uh, their quota. Like, so they, instead of saying, I, I stopped my quota of 300 cars this month, I really only stopped 250 and 50. I ran the license plate, so I said I did my 300. Which seems like. I mean, as, it's not 100% honest. We're going to give you that. So it is dishonest, but in the greater scheme of things, like, you know, that beating, wasn't, beating someone to death or shooting them in the back as they're fleeing. As opposed to oh, letting some people skip right. on a you know on a two mile an hour over but ticket, it, right? And it, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say so just to bring it full circle to the skeptical part. I read that article and I was like, why is this the first thing we're hearing mm. in years about the Lori's list? Because I think an average Granite Stater would just read that and be like, oh. These guys are heroes. Isn't it awesome that they didn't give extra people right. extra tickets? Or they just right? wouldn't think it's egregious. They wouldn't right. be like, oh my God, can you imagine this guy? This guy's a cop and he, and he, he did X, he Y, and had his quota. Right. And so I think, call me skeptical, I think it's actually tactical so that this information came out so that now they've primed readers to be like, Oh, is this the kind of stuff that puts you on the Lori's list? Well, uh, we should just totally let these guys off the list. If, right. Because it looks like this it's is stupid, silliness. This right? Is, this is... It doesn't sound like excessive force. Right. It doesn't sound like falsified records. It doesn't sound like lying under oath in court. You know, I tweeted once years and years, probably 10 years ago, maybe it was on Facebook, um, that I said, you know, the more I learn about the criminal justice system, and the fact that everyone who's in jail says, I'm not guilty, it becomes less funny when you right. actually understand that a lot of people do actually end the, up in jail yeah. 
because other people lied about what yeah. happened, you know? So it is a big deal. Like, if we want the system to work... We have to make sure the system's working. Then we have to make sure it works. Well, and I think it works better when it's not in secret. Why well, do you think that to be so sealed the other, wrong? Uh, the other instance that I saw besides those three officers was the, the last officer who's still on the list of the Manchester off-duty police officers that beat the living crap out of the guy out of a, a strange brew, you know, umpteen years ago, I don't remember now. But it is weird that the other guys came off the list, and this guy's retired. And that makes me, there was part of me that was like, okay, they don't take anything away from you mm -hmm. other than your ability to testify in court for being on this list. So if you're no longer in law enforcement, and this list is not readily available you know like if you're retired police you're yeah what, I, I, why would why you be fighting it yeah you know why would you well, I, mean, I mean a lot of these officers actually do uh retire and then go work in well, another that's department I mean. it, it, so that's maybe that's other. part of the background check and then it's like oh i can't get it or i can't you know yeah. triple dip uh, which is not a kind of ice cream. No. It's a kind of... <laughs> Might be an ice cream, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, yeah, fair enough. Oh, I had the best ice cream this weekend. Uh, <laughs> we, we took it. My parents aren't doing great, right. but we took a, uh, my, I don't think my mom had left the house in like a year. Or, right. And we were just like not taking no yeah. for an answer. So we bundled her in the car and took her for a Manny. And then we were driving downtown just to show my cousin. And my sister goes, do you guys feel like ice cream? And everyone's like, yes. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we, I, it was a, I don't usually eat real sugar ice cream, so yeah. it, was, it was a treat. Yeah. Um, speaking of food, yes. there's this Free State Freedom Guide that just came out. This is new. It's the guy who runs the Independence Inn. Okay. Uh, he, and there's an eatery out there that does local uh, local food. I've had some really good meals there. Mm -hmm. So uh, he started an organization that's really focusing on sort of farm to table, yep. a lot of the food freedom, the people who are like, hey, we want to... Um, you know, we want to be able to, to grow food yep. and, and feed our neighbors in ways that have less regulations. Because, yeah. like, some of, the, some of the USDA regulations are actually, like, insane. So if you are FDA approved, mm. like, you know the stamp they put on the yeah. meat? Yeah. What's that again? I it's, think it's I the, don't know. I think it's like that blue stamp yeah. you get on the meat. So in order to get that, you if you have one of those compliant facilities, one of the laws, one of the things you have to do is the inspector who's not always on site. So they may just show up willy nilly. That inspector has to have their own private toilet. It's like, what's up with that? So it's like, oh, so you want a farm, now you have to build a a, a crapper for, a, for a, a, a government employee who may or may not show up. I mean, this is the kind of nonsense that I'm just like, we could be doing so much better if we just <laughs> got rid of, I don't know, 98% of the crap. Especially <laughs> the federal government. If we could eliminate almost, like, at least 80% of the federal government, probably. Oh my, I Easily. mean, I think we could just, like, cross off departments. Yeah. That's like, what that, I mean. And that's how it was supposed to work. I mean, maybe yeah. this sounds shocking to folks, but... That is actually what America was. Yes. It was 50 states, and the idea was they would compete. And only the minimal things that needed to be coordinated amongst them all. So, you know. But you give them an inch. And then they, we and got they will department. just. And the next thing you know, <coughs> now we have, I mean, um, all team. the departments. Um, I mean, what is the Department of Education on the federal level actually do? It's I like don't, just I, mess just things employs up. people and creates layers of bureaucracy that forces states to have to jump through hoops to get money that was compiled from other states. So, like, it's just stupid. Like, we have this whole big fight here in Manchester now with the budget. Uh, that just came out. Uh, the, well, they approved the budget last night. Um, I always think it's funny when they... It is kind of... Funny is not the word I should probably use. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so they funny approved ha -ha. the fiscal year 2024 budget of... $391.8 million, which is for the municipal and the schools. Uh, they they didn't have to override the cap. Well, yes, that's because the cap was 4.96%. Um, so big freaking deal that they didn't exceed 4.96. <laughs> they still increased um, 
3.48%. So it'll be like... Um, is the cap tied to inflation? It is. Someone I, asked me that so the other day, I and I said, up, I think it is. Know, again, but I government, I was trying sure. to look up what, like an easy place to look at the CPI, um, because the way the cap, I mean, <laughs> I, oh my God. for those of you who maybe don't know me, which is hard to believe, so back in uh, 2000, 2008, um, myself and some other folks. My um, neighbor, in fact. Coordinate, <laughs> yes, Brink is your neighbor, and Brink was very involved. Um, we coordinated the collection of all the signatures of people in Manchester to force the aldermen to put the tax cap on the ballot because the aldermen were resistant and didn't want to limit spending, and it, um, we had a fight in court. Um, once it did pass in 2009, then um, there was a lawsuit and it wasn't enacted and then we had to change the law at the state house to make it retro it took a lot of stuff and then a few years later and this is to make like these incremental changes this is take, just like, to say you can't grow spending faster than the rate of inflation, inflation. like so you then, can't steal more from us than we're actually exactly. th than you're already and, stealing from us and then us. over <laughs> um a few years later they amended it to say instead of just the prior years um inflation rate you average the three years the three prior years which has its upsides and downsides because if you if if inflation's low that means it takes longer it takes longer for the government to react um, which can work for and against the taxpayers right now we're in the work against the taxpayers because That's um usually how it works you can't see i'm sure you can't see this graph but over here is where you know a few years ago and then it went up and then this it's is come CPI down a little. Now? So cpi the, or urban so consumer price, price index, index urban and it's on the bureau of labor statistics <laughs> and also um but when you average things this year the, the tax cap was 4.96% because last year was so high and then there were two lower years. Next year it'll be even higher because we lo we're dropping out this right. older year that was way down here. And then the third year, two years from now, will still be high. So, so also, just so that folks know, I, I don't know 100%, but the CPI over the years, it used to actually measure what you as a just an ordinary human yeah. would spend your money on. So gas, yeah. food, uh, like and for food it would be like milk and eggs yeah. and some meat and whatever. And over the years, because the government has been playing the shell game for 100 plus years since... Uh, 1913 and then in 1971 when we went off the gold standard mm -hmm. so um so they're, they're they're trying to hide the fact that the u.s purchasing power of the dollar has declined by 97 plus percent yeah so when people go is everyone getting poorer no they are well, you are getting because poorer because you, you the can't debt buy anything that we generate in order to pay for free college and free things and free whatever we're giving away for free this week means we're borrowing money so we're spending more so then the cpi they actually have reduced what they measure yeah, so they that take they out don't food. have they take, to they take out things so it's it's a strange number it's like just a number <laughs> it's, it's generally what inflation is but it's not accurate like it's not real it's, dollars it's, and cents. It hasn't quite factored in no. the, what you and But it does impact the, 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 prices the tax and spending cap um, here in Manchester, and that leads us to the next piece. So for those who don't remember, um, I think three years ago, we had a ballot question asking, shall we um, establish a charter commission specifically for the school district? Um, we normally, every 10 years elect a charter commission to review all of the ch city charter and make proposed changes that go to the alderman and then they get put on the ballot. Um, like I said, three years ago, there was a question, maybe it was four years ago, should we have this school charter? Which I was like, what does that mean? Because we don't even have a school charter, but whatever. So they put this, they say, voters said yes. So then we elected 20 people or whatever it is to serve on this school charter commission and they all met and they did all their due diligence and they looked at things. And the thing that they wanted, they, <laughs> the others, is they want the city, the school district to be its own taxing, taxing entity, authority. Yeah. right? So that was what they wanted. They wanted the school charter commission to come back and say, 
yes, we should put a question to the voter about whether we should um, make the school district a separate taxing entity. And what that would do, or what they were attempting to do, is to get the school budget, which is more than 50% yeah, of about the city's 60. budget, yeah. under out from under the tax gap yeah. and put it over here so, so that they could go bananas. So, but two years ago, the Charter Commission recommended, no, we shouldn't put that question before the voters, which is yeah. interesting, right? So two Maybe years they ago, they would we lose. elected people <laughs> to look at this issue more than just the aldermen um, and say, is this a good idea? And they said, no. So now we're going to try it again. So now the alderman would like to put the question on um, this November's ballot um, to say, should the school district um, be set its own budget? So they kind of like tiptoe around it. By setting its own budget, like you said, it would come out from underneath the tax cap because in all the language in the charter about the tax cap, it talks about the alderman voting and the alderman overriding. But if the school board is over here, because right now the way it works is the school board says we need $10 and the city government says we need $10 and the alderman go, well, okay, school board, you can have, you know, a, Ten nine dollars and ninety cents in city, you can only have nine dollars, and that's what we're going to approve. And how you spend your nine dollars and ninety cents is your business. Um, we can't control that, but we can control the total numbers that you are spending of the city's coffers. Um, and by city, I mean the taxpayers. Um, <laughs> so the the overall budget has to fall within the cap. If we if we separate the two, the city government, which is already the where, that's where they take the money from. You know, we get fewer and fewer and lesser and lesser services. We never get anything new on the city mm -hmm. side. Um, the, I mean, in fairness, the police and the fire have to scrape and scrounge and like figure out where to get right. Yeah, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And then well, I'm just getting saying, new secret toys. Right, but I'm saying, but but there's things that probably would be better for the for the consumer us if we had funding that we weren't constantly giving to the school district. And the well, school well, district also, is raising million, getting millions of dollars extra for thousands of fewer students. We've shown you that graph before. It's a complete X. It makes no sense. <laughs> so why, in any sane world, would I want to say that the school board that it can't get out of its own way? I mean, come on, for decades, nobody, there hasn't been a functional cohesive school board that doesn't spend time just arguing with itself, who can't seem to manage with millions of dollars more with thousands fewer students, but we'd like to give them taxing authority without a tax cap that, to cover them. It's just bad news. The thing that um, last night I thought they would vote to send it to the, the um, to the ballot, but they do have to follow a process. There's a state law that you have to do X, Y, and Z. So they're gonna pull the public hearing next month, but that's all I know. There's no date, I couldn't find it on the calendar anyways. Um, so when we find out that information, it's important that people reach out to the alderman, either ahead of time or at the public hearing and just say, you know what, how about this? If anything, I think the school district should go back to being a department and, and answer to the alderman. So that somebody, maybe, I mean, there's no reason why the alderman and the school board members can't work closely together anyways. Why isn't there joint meetings? You know, there's all sorts of things they could do to have more, a better working relationship between the alderman and the school board, but that's not what the school board wants. And that's not what Manchester Proud and all these different entities that they bubble up that are, you know, supportive of the school district, that's not what they want. They want autonomy. They want to be able to spend, 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 spend. And Don't you think teachers would much rather like work in a small school well, I where think like you you are just responsible for, for your that. classroom? Yeah. I do. I think ultimately over time, when school choice expands, um, because it's looking like if nothing else, not that it's a perfect thing, but I every time it expands, I'm happy about it. Uh, education freedom accounts will expand. Um, I from 300% of poverty level to 350% of poverty level. That was supposed to be voted, I think, tomorrow in the Senate, and then it'll go on to the governor and he'll sign that. So, so I've been seeing a lot of criticism, actually, on Twitter of people, you know, it's interesting, uh, there was a lot more engagement that's starting to happen and, and uh, between sort of, uh, you know, discussions where it's like, oh, can we move the needle a yeah. little? But someone yesterday was, was saying, uh, 
you know, ninety uh, percent of vouchers. I forget the actual. They keep saying percentage. vouchers in New Hampshire doesn't have a voucher, but that's right. point. Yeah, that's a technique. So, so this was um, this was actually the teachers union yep. of New Hampshire, so NFA, AFT, yeah, AFT, AFT, or AFT, any, yeah, whatever. AFT, NH, whatever, one of those, right? And um, and they were like ninety percent of voucher users never went to public school, and I reshared it, and I just said so. Well, that's like, like, like so to me, it's so fascinating. And then I got into a massive fight with a whole bunch of people, right? Because I was like, but why? Why is that? Like, like uh, and, and then someone was like, well, you shouldn't blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, I'm part of the public. Right. If you're going to call it a public school, because they took me on because I said it's a government school. And they're like, it's a public school. And then I'm like, well, if that's the argument you want to make, then I'm going to be like, I'm part of the public. Then you got to listen right. or at least we fund consider. It. You know, our opinions yep. as well. So. Well, and I think it's funny because, like, so in the in, in a realm, we talk about teachers would probably prefer to work, teach in a smaller school. But unfortunately, without more school choice, they're limited to where they can, you know, make a, a good living as a teacher. And I get that. But then they have to deal with all the stupidity that's in the schools. Yeah, so yeah, that's a bad that hypocrisy. And it is. It's just and insane. And, um, and really, the only people getting rich, right, the teachers, their salaries aren't going no, up. No, it's the bureaucracy. But there's this red tape class. Yep. And, you know, like what some of these schools have, you know, like Multiple three principals and vice principals and, 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 and assistant those principals. those are the people we got to look at a little well, more and, carefully. And, you know, if the teachers union wants to say... Uh, stand there and say teachers deserve more money you know like I can't really argue with that right I can't you know that's a case to be made everyone but, wants but when more you're money saying, it's bad that that group of kids over there get quality education because that's what they're saying they don't they don't care about the kid they don't care about the student I don't care if those students went to public school private school home school or whatever I want to see more students in New Hampshire have access to better quality education. And if that means that a small handful of lower income families that struggled to pay their tuition before EFAs are now more good readily programs. available to pay, continue to pay private tuition for their student to get a quality education, that is what I as a taxpayer want. I don't care I'm tired of hearing the argument that, well, the voucher system, which we don't have, stop using the word voucher, we've corrected you three million times, um, the voucher system in New Hampshire is stealing money from the public school system. No, it's just giving money from the large, 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 large pool of tax dollars that funds education in general. And so that's the way to think about it. Like, we, we all want children to have a quality education where that happens and who's doing it should kind of be irrelevant the thing that we should agree upon is we want kids to be able to read and write and thrive right. in their future right um i'll quickly just because we're running out of time so they also voted last night to authorize the negotiation for a year-long lease at the beach street homeless shelter um there was i guess um private, you know, uh, what do you call it, non-public session or whatever. It was interesting. Pat Long and Aunt, uh, Tony Sapienza said they supported the concept but felt uncomfortable supporting a project without a clearly defined budget, yet they voted for it. Um, so that was just like whatever. And um, I've said it. I've sent an email directly. I'll say it again because when people do good things, I want to thank them for it. Um, my alderman, Bill Barry, thank you very much for voting against um, this without some sort of budget in place. Nice. Um, Joe Lavaster, Chrissy Cantor, Ed, uh, Bill Barry, and Ed Sapienza were the only aldermen who voted against it. Um, Thanks, so there's guys. that. Well, Anyways, I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. Um, watch the air quality. <laughs> it's going to be rainy all week anyway, so you don't really need to be outside. Um, that's all. I can't think of anything. We'll yeah. see you guys next week. Okay, bye. Bye.